Okay, I keep trying to record this video and stuff keeps happening. So if the postman comes or something, I'm sorry, we're just going to carry on. <laughs> okay, so um, a little roundup of what's going on with the workshop. What a beautiful site, nice line of, of broken Zoe's. So uh, the one in the workshop at the moment, um, I've previously put a motor on that um, for the customer. It's now developed another fault, um, kind of intermittent. Looks like it's um, got moisture in some of the wiring really annoying fault i've kind of spent far too much time on that but um i'm sort of intrigued to get to the bottom of it and it's really irritating me and i don't like to be beaten so um yeah so that was kind of costing me money but um this is my wife's old blue zoe so um she's now got the zd50 um and that <laughs> interestingly literally in about the week as i was finishing the zd50 that started developing real severe motor bearing noise it's done 116,000 miles so not too bad and there's a knock from the front which i think is the steering rack because um i've done the drop links and lower arms and um it's not those one of the drop links one of the uh, lower arms sorry the ball joint was quite bad um but that's um yeah, that's not fixed the noise. So we'll see about that. So that needs loads of time spending on it. Um, I'm just going to skip past this one. But this one's recently arrived. That needs motor bearings. So that one's sat there. So this car, basically, the customer gave it to me. And the customer even paid half of the transport to get it to me. They wanted to get rid of it that much. So... Um, yeah, this car literally is a liability. It's not even it's not even worthless. But why is that? So basically, um this car starts and drives and charges and does all that kind of stuff. It's a little bit scruffy. Um it is a late um 22 kilowatt hour 16 plate. Um yeah, sort of the last of the 22 kilowatt hours, which you can kind of tell by the wheels because these wheels you only had on 22s and then those wheels you only had on 40s. Um and those wheels are from a Clio because I put them on there. Um so this car, yeah, so it needs a motor. It, it drives until it gets a rotor position fault. So the car needs to know exactly the precise motor position. Um, so the motor controller fires the phases. It's got a three-phase motor. So it sends power to the motor down those three phases. And it wants to see that motor rotate by the amount it expects. And it's got a position sensor, which has got one feed and two return signals. And it wants to see that move and it wants to have that confirmation. Um, there's a red kite up there. That's quite cool. I'm easily distracted. Anyway, um, it wants to see those um, signals come back and have that confirmation, um, and then it'll be happy to continue. And for some reason, it's losing that signal. Uh, so it breaks down and gets a rotor position fault. I've seen it where uh, bearings go dry and lock up, and then the shaft can move, um, just because the, the play in the bearing gets too much. I've also seen the bearings get dry and hot and lock up and rotate in the housing so like the rotor rotates and the whole bearing in a race and outer race it's all rotating and grind out the housing and then the whole shaft can move because where the bearing sits is oval um but that doesn't seem to be happening in this case because it's not even making a motor noise so kind of interesting um but it also needs the air conditioning compressor so this car at renault would probably cost seven and a half to eight thousand pounds to get fixed it's a battery lease late um 2016 it's done forty-five thousand, i think something like that a little bit untidy um the value of that car is about three grand if i tidy it up maybe three and a half obviously working so it's uneconomical to repair and it, i don't think it's particularly significant that it's an electric car because all cars can get get you know repair costs can exceed the value of the car this is, this is eight years old um but these are quite good little EVs. Nice to drive. Decent range. Range on that probably sort of 80, 90 miles on a full charge. Um, at an independent garage, obviously, it would be cheaper to repair. So they'll find you a second-hand motor, probably about a grand. Um, air conditioning compressor, 500 quid. There's still going to be quite a bit of labour in there. But you could... I mean, it would still kind of get to the value of the car with all the labour. But maybe not quite. You know, maybe sort of three grand or something like that. But... It's there and about, so even at an independent garage, um, uneconomical to repair. The big issue with this car is that it's got a battery lease. 
and this is where the liability aspect comes into it so when you have a battery lease you sign up for one two or three years and then it kind of just rolls on after that so that blue one's got a battery lease um but i've had that several years and i'm well out of the the original time period i sort of specified when you sign up you sign the form you say how many months you want um and how many miles you're going to do and all that kind of thing um but you can get past that point, but it just kind of keeps rolling along. The issue is when it comes to, let's say, the lady just wants to get rid of this car, um, and she speaks to Renault, and Renault say, okay, to end the lease, you've got to give the battery back, obviously, because it's not yours, you rent it, you lease it. You've got to take the car to a dealer, and they do some tests on the car, first of all, just to make sure the battery's not in like a dangerous state or something, because they know they can ship it, basically. It's not going to blow up or whatever. Um, so everything's working well, parameters are normal kind of thing. Um, and then they order a special plastic box. They take the battery out, put it in the box and send it back to France. The problem is um, Mobilize, formerly RCI Bank, um, will tell you that you are responsible for the cost of removing that battery and sending it back to France. Now, I can sort of... It, the amount isn't specified in the lease, but it does say that you're responsible for sort of some of these costs. Um, so that's where that comes from in the, in the terms of the battery lease. However, in my view, and I think the view that court would take, because let's say the same happened on that blue Zoe. Um, I would say that because your lease period has officially ended so let's say you signed up for a three-year lease and you've paid for three years and then it's just rolled on you haven't agreed to pay them anything after that point and if you're actively trying to give them back their goods so let's say for example um that i can't fix this car either and i'm going to scrap it because now it's mine um and i've taken over the lease um i could take the battery out put it on a trailer take it to a Renault Zeddy dealership who are trained to deal with electric vehicles and batteries and all that kind of stuff and put it in the car park and say, there you go, there's your battery. Put the pallet on the floor and drive away. And I could say to Mobilize, I've returned your goods because I haven't agreed to pay anything more than three years. I've had a three-year rental. If they want to ship it back to Timbuktu, then that's entirely up to them. So this lady was told she would have to pay £1,400 to have the battery taken out and shipped back to France. And she's also responsible for taking the car to a Renault dealership and then taking it away afterwards. You've got like some truck costs to move it around. You might get a bit of scrap, so that might pay for that. Um, but yeah, £1,400 liability, this car. So basically, the lady um, was more than happy to give me the car if I signed over the lease, obviously. Um, I've got to take that over, freeing her of the liability. And basically... Um, she originally wanted to pay for the ship for the truck, but it was a bit more than she expected, so we split it in half. So we paid half the truck each, which was fine. So I got a free car. Obviously, I've got to fix it, but it's just ridiculous. This battery lease was not thought through. I've had battles with them in the past. The way you sign up for it is ridiculous. Basically, they're so slow at responding to things. Um, I chatted to people who've got cars where they sent in the paperwork and nothing's happened. So the previous owner is either still paying for the lease or has cancelled the direct debit, but then he's getting a bad credit rating because Mobilize, Renault Finance still consider that they're liable for it. Um, but yeah, if you email them, nothing ever comes back. You have to ring them and chase them up and then they still don't send it and you have to ring them again. Um, so you get all these cars with like orphaned leases or like sometimes they're owned by companies and the company just closes down basically or like a sole trader or whatever um, or small limited company. They shut the company and they just stop paying the lease, basically, and the company's gone. And they do get all these orphan lease cars, basically. Some of them, they eventually write it off. Because I had one where the guy had a fault with a car. It was at Renault. And he sort of agreed with Renault he would stop paying the lease, somehow or other. Um, because the car was at Renault and they couldn't fix it. Um, and he explained all this to me. And I basically took over the car because he got fed up. Renault couldn't fix it. Um, and when I inquired about the lease, they said they'd ended it. They'd just written it off, basically. So I was like, okay, so I got a battery-owned car at that point. But it's just so ridiculous. So um, my opinion, um, and I think a court's opinion, would be that you're, if the lease period has ended, you're not responsible for that anymore because you've not agreed to pay them anymore and you're returning the goods. I mean, you pick the car up from a dealership, so return it back to the dealership, you know, back to a dealership. You're, you didn't pick the car up from France... 
So why are you responsible for shipping the battery back to France? So what I would do if I was this lady, and I do like a bit of a fight um, with companies, what I would do is um, if they refuse to accept the battery back once I've delivered it on a pallet or I've offered to deliver it on a pallet and they've said they wouldn't accept it, is um, I would start a court claim. So you can get a battery buyout price from Mobilize Renault Finance. Um, and it'd be, I think, something like 1,800 quid or something on this. So you get a quote from them. Yeah, so it'd be 1,800 quid to buy the battery. Perfect. So I would take them to court for 1,800 pounds on the basis that they will not accept their own goods back, their rental goods back. Therefore, um, they will not free me from, from this bond of perpetually having to lease something which they're refusing to accept back. Therefore, I want to get out of the lease and therefore I'm claiming the two, the, what was it, 1,800 quid, whatever it is. Um, and then at the point the court gives you the, the 1,800 quid from Renault, then pay it back to them and end the lease. And that's honestly what I would do. This battery lease is ridiculous. I'm glad it's not on the Z50. Nissan did it briefly on the Nissan Leaf Flex vehicles, but got rid of it pretty quick. Um, and it's just completely ridiculous. It's not been thought through. Um, and what happens in these situations hasn't been thought through. It's just insane. Um, and it's really annoying. And that's basically the reason why I'm spending far too much time on that car that's in the workshop, because the same is gonna happen with that. Because that's turning into a liability. Um, because the guy, the guy's going to have the same problem. He's got a dead car. He can't scrap it because the battery's owned by Renault and they won't accept it back unless you give them the car and then pay them to do their tests and get their special box and whatever. One that he took the dealership told me, um, when I had a little debate just to test the water with this one at one point, um, told me that they wouldn't accept the battery just on a pallet because they have to do a load of tests and those tests are with their um, sort of clip dealership like diagnostic tool, Renault diagnostic tool, and they do that through the OBD port. And if they've not got a car, they can't do those tests. So then they can't order their special plastic box and they can't produce their safety report for the shipping agent and all that kind of stuff. But basically that is not the consumer's problem. If you rent something, you take it back to where you got it from. How can they refuse to accept it? You've rented it for a period of, uh, you know, a year or three years or whatever, you're finished with it, you return it back to where you got it from. How have they got a leg to stand on in terms of you have to pay us to ship it to France? Well, it's not my problem, it's going back to France. So I find that totally ridiculous, but um, unfortunately, it makes this car a liability. And that is why battery lease is absolutely stupid. Um, should never have been dreamt up in the first place. And ironically, they did battery lease on Zoe's and the batteries on Zoe's last really, really well. Um, so yeah, okay. It might help some people who are a little bit nervous about the batteries, but they come with an eight year warranty, 100,000 miles. I mean, you need more than that. Okay, it made the cars a bit cheaper, but they really should have thought them through or you know, thought through what they're gonna do in these sort of edge cases um, or not do it. So similar situation when a car is involved in an accident, it gets written off. Um, it's meant to go back to um, Renault. So the basically, if an insurance company wants to write off a car and it's got a battery lease, the car is meant to be taken to Renault to be inspected. Um, and if the battery is undamaged, then Renault will take it back and send it, take it out and send it back to France. But they still want to charge the insurance company for that money, for that 1,400 quid to send it back to France, which insurance company either pay or what usually happens is basically um, the insurance company work out the value of the car get the battery buyout from Mobilize, because obviously HBI check it and find out it's got a finance effectively battery lease. They send the um, battery buyout money to Mobilize, Renault Finance, to end the battery lease, and then you get the rest, basically. So you get less, but obviously you don't own the whole car. But it's just, it's just ridiculous. Um, you know, the fact that you can rent something and you can take it back to where you got it from, having looked after it, and they'll refuse to accept it back. You know, that's kind of like a, they won't take yes for an answer kind of thing. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So that makes this car a liability. Um, I mean, as I say, it doesn't make much difference the fact that it's got, it needs work doing and it's an electric vehicle. They can be a little bit more expensive to repair, but then, you know, plenty of cars have, have all kinds of issues that can be expensive to repair. Um, so I think the real issue here is the battery lease and it's absolutely ridiculous and that's my opinion so let me know what you think if you've had issues if you've had battles if you've had interesting battery lease things happen yeah be interested to hear um, what dealings you've had with with Renault
And now I need to go and crack on and work out what's wrong with that car and uh, get this queue moving. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Take care.